Hello, guys and gals, and this is part two of the Discovery of Dragons, new research revealed. It is a book by Graham Bass, a.k.a. Roland W. Greasebeam, B.S.C., um, Bachelors of Serpentology, maybe? I don't know exactly what that means. It probably says in the um, book jacket. But um, we always start out with this image here with the dragon and... Um, I just love that that image. In the last one, uh, we read the, um, for all the dragons in my life. We read the dedication. We also read the um, introduction, which we won't read this time. If you want it, if you want to, um, this is um, copyright uh, two thousand seven, and um, we already read the the, 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 the introduction. We learned about the, um, the snow dragon, the uh, emerald dragon, uh, emerald dragon, the um, red Welsh dragon, or Welsh red dragon, or something like that, and um, that's St. George's dragon, or something like that. Um, yeah, the St. George dragon. Anyways, now we have um, the discovery of Asiatic dragons. The letters of Sung Mi Yang, Ying. Of Su of Sung Mi or Sung Mai Ying. I'm not sure of how you pronounce that. Now I didn't need to um, actually transcribe these because they weren't in cursive. So um, it says the classic Asiatic dragon is a ferocious and cunning beast that has a that has carved a special place in the hearts and the minds of of the multitudinous people of Asia. Not surprisingly, really, anything that's planned ways... Oh, that's planning... Oh, anything that's planning ways to have you for breakfast deserves a little respect, if you ask me. Strange in that these magnificent animals should not have been discovered until the late 13th century, and then by a diminutive young woman who had no prior experience in serpent serpentology whatsoever but such is the case for the such is the case as the following letters will demonstrate no doubt professor smarty pants Fib uh, fibblewitz would disagree but then this is the the man who would have us believe dragons evolved on one of the moons of jupiter and were brought to earth by the aztecs so i think we can disregard his opinions as no more than the pr the product of a feeble mind Thank you very much. It says, in 1277, Sung Mei Ying, uh, daughter of a 13th century Chinese silk trader, set out from the imperial city of Chiang An with a bunch of silks, hoping to earn sufficient money in the markets of distant Kathmandu to pay the growing medical bills of her gravely ill father. At a narrow mountain pa pass, her caravan was waylaid by a pair of marauding Mongolian screamers, and Mei Ying lost all her wares. In despair, she started back towards Chiang Yan, but along the way discovered a creature whose value made her precious silks look like worthless rags. The fabulous, mythical Japanese butterfly lizard. From the beginning, Sung Mi Ying embarked upon an adventure that was to change the face of serpentology forever. And we have here... These are beautiful dragons, by the way. Okay. I'm going to... Um, okay. okay, it says, 13th of February, 1277. Um, for the gracious attention of Sung Chen Yi, 70, oh, 76 Floppy Willow Boulevard, Chiang An. Dear Father, forgive my disobedience. I have left Chiang Yan, despite your forbidding me to do so. But my actions, however foolish, were dictated solely by my love for you, dear Father. How could you? How could a dutiful daughter have stood uh, stood by while that incompetent physician? Lao Zhang Fu uh, lined his pockets with gold at her ailing uh, at her at her ailing father's expense. I therefore cons 
conceived of a most audacious, audacious plan, which is certain to surprise you, Father, since you know me to be but a timid thing, scarcely capable of bold action. I took a bundle of, fi of finest silks from the family warehouse, intending to sell them at the great markets of, the, of distant Kathmandu. The money would have been sufficient to pay off Z Zhao Zhang Fu and employ a real doctor to, care, to cure your, to cure your de debilitating ailment. How my hands trembled as I leapt the wall of the warehouse, eluding the guards, forcing the doors, oh, forcing the door, and made, oh, forcing, oh, forced the door, and made off silently with the, the, pref, the precious package. But at last my plans now lie in ruins. The caravan which, with which I left Chiang An, having first disguised myself as a simple peasant girl, was waylaid by a narrow mount was waylaid in a narrow mountain pass by a pair of marauding dragons, fearsome beasts with evil tongues and vicious dispositions. I had thought such creatures existed only in myth. When the terrible beasts descended upon our ca our camp, screeching and fouling the air with their appalling stench, I was filled with fear and loathing. But momentarily overcoming uh, overcoming my natural timidity. For I am, of course, only a weak thing. Uh, a weak thing, more used to needlepoint than fighting dragons. I, I grasped a flaming brand from the fire and leapt forward to drive them off. My fellow travelers, meanwhile, fled into the woods. No doubt they were attempting to lure the dragons away, so I must not allow myself to entertain the notion that they displayed less fortitude than frightened rabbits. Despite my effort... The hideous beasts eventually prevailed, though I have ho though I have hopes that one dragon at least received a mortal blow. I was unhurt, but devastated to find the precious silks entirely ruined. I have disobeyed you, my beloved father, and there and through my full hearty actions caused great loss to our family fortunes. I shall return to Chi Chiang and forthwith in the most dejected of spirits. Your faithful daughter. My Ying. Okay, now it says here, uh, the Mongolian screamers were in fact quite common in that part of the world in the thirteenth century. But until Sung Min Ying encountered, no one had survived the report to, to report its existence. I know it by the editor. Okay, it says here, uh, plate five, Mongolian screamer. Ever since the discovery of the Mongolian screamer, its complex and extreme antisocial linguistic abilities have fascinated serpentologists the world over. It is credited with no less than 73 distant, distinctive calls, all of which appear to be either openly aggressive or offensive to other dragons. Okay. It looks like it is um, <coughs> the size of a cat. What? <coughs> oh, that's a small dragon then. Um, and then that's where it's from. Now, let's see. Now, this is about the story and what, what happened. Okay. There she is. There's her sick father. Or something. There she is running off with the silks. There she is fighting off the dragons with the fire. There's, uh... And she thinks she hurt one of them. Okay. Moving on. And this is basically the size of a rabbit. Okay, so the dragons over here are tiny. Oh, I love that. Look, it's, it's, it's getting nectar from that flower. It's cute. Okay. 24th of April, 1277. For the gracious attention of Sung Chen Yi. Um, I think that was the name of my um, my skin doctor, actually. Anyway. Um, 76 Floppy Willow Boulevard, Chiang An. Dear Father. Wonderful news. I've made an exciting discovery that I believe has the potential to free you from the discomfort of your distressing and protracted ailment, and it may also go some way towards deflecting any paternal anger considering certain ruined silks. As I journeyed back towards Chiang An, downcast and forlorn, I turned aside at the at a roadside shrine to lighten the heavy burden of sadness that lay upon my soul. 
and the heavy burden of weariness that lay upon my feet. In the garden of, the sh of, the, of that restful place, my contemplations were interrupted by the slightest of sounds, a soft thrumming coming from just above my head. I looked up to see an exquisite dragon, scarcely larger than a songbird, drawing nectar from the cherry blossoms. The Sakura tree. In other words, the Sakura tree. At once my heart le uh, leapt, for I recalled a passage in the chronicles of the ancient sages that described a magical creature, light of body and with the finest of gossamer wings. The creature was said to possess healing powers beyond those of even the wisest of physicians. Father, I have found the mythical butterfly lizard of ancient Japan. Uh, the creature was alarmed by my presence and at once took to the air, but I soothed it by softly playing my lute. How thankful I was that my clever father had insisted I persevere with music practice despite continual objections from myself, the neighbors, and most of the local dogs. To my joy, the creature came to me wondrously unafraid and alighted upon my outstretched arm. Even now, it is safely concealed within the folds of my tunic as I return home with all speed in the fervent hope that I may have found the answer to your malady. Your faithful, if somewhat undisciplined, daughter, Mei Ying. That's cute. Those are pretty cherry blossoms. Okay, and as we said, it was the size of a... Uh, oh, no, that's a, actually a mouse. Not a rabbit. It's, a size, it's the size of a mouse. Uh... A creature fitting the description of the Japanese butterfly lizard is mentioned in a fanciful ballad written by the Japanese sage and songster Karaoke in AD 342. The popular number, I left my harp in Sampan Sam Sam Disco, contains a dream sequence in which the composer speaks of a magical creature that, that healed his broken heart. That's a letter by the editor. Plate 6. Japanese butterfly lizard. These diminutive dragons secrete a sweet scent, scented oil from glands beneath their wings. The healing properties of this oil defy magical, I mean, uh, medical explanation. However, the oil appears effective in the treatment of a wide range of ailments. And here we go. There's the uh, shrine. And then there's that cute little dragon. Let me see. It's so cute. And then there she is playing the lute to soothe it. And she brings it home with her, I guess. We have... Let's keep going. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. 1st of June, 1277. For the gracious attention of Sung Chen Yi. Uh, 76 Floppy Willow Boulevard. Chiang An. Dear Father, Alas, my return to Chiang An has been delayed. Five nights ago, a fierce storm forced me to seek shelter in a squalid tavern frequented by brigands, swindlers, and used rickshaw dealers. To my dismay, the Japanese butterfly lizard was taken from me as I slept. On awakening and realizing my great loss, I immediately set out to track the thieves down. Their trail was immediately set out... Oh was clear in the overnight snow. I guessed they were perhaps five in number, and I followed after them day and night until I re reached the gates of a great temple. But here the trail ended. The temple itself was deserted and soon realized why. A pair of huge and evil-winged creatures had made their nest in the temple forecourt. Two of the bandits lay dead where they had encountered the terrible beast, but the remaining thieves and the precious Japanese butterfly lizard were nowhere to be seen. I observed the horrid creature, the, the horrid creatures from the safety of an overhanging branch, and was reminded of the many carved statues of mythical winged worms that stand in the parks and gardens of Chiang An. I have thus chosen to call this new discovery the common garden worm. While I watched and considered how best to drive the worms from the temple, I suddenly heard a soft thrumming and knew the Japanese butterfly lizard must be at hand. I spied the creature perched at the far end of my branch 
and edged out to retrieve it. But the branch was rotten, and even as my hands closed around the lizard, I fell to the courtyard below. How thankful I was to have learned some simple acrobatics by watching my wondrous father practicing this ancient skill, when I should have been concentrating on my needlepoint. For this, I was able to fall with such in such a way as to damage neither myself nor the precious dragon. The worms immediately came at me, but they were slow and lethargic, as if weighted down by the large and recent meal. I realized that what had become of the other... Th I realized then what had become of the other thieves. I departed the temple without delay, and am now once more on my way home. The legendary butterfly lizard of Japan will soon be in Chiang An. Your faithful daughter, Mi Ying. Or Mai Ying. The statue in the garden of Chiang An were subsequently found to resemble more closely the red-bellied hooter, an extremely territorial and bad-tempered species of worm discovered by Sung Mi Ying some years later. As a result, the common... The common ah, the common garden worm is renamed the Eastern Temple Worm. Editor. Plate 7. Eastern Temple Worm. The propensity of Asi Asiatic worms to adapt, oh, to adopt temples is well documented. However, this particular species seems quite unfussed about the exact nature of the edifice in which they lay claim. One account exists of an eastern temple worm adopting a post box while the result with the result that no mail was delivered in that part of Canton for over 30 years okay so I guess it's a post box lizard that's that's um it right there that's a man size and uh, we got time for another one I guess I'm not sure exactly how many of these there are in this chapter. I'm going to quickly check. Okay, and this is the last one. Okay. Oh, wait, we didn't look at the um, thing along the bottom. Okay. And there they are. They're all lethargic. And she got the dragon back. Okay, now. This is the last one we will read in this episode. Okay, it says, 30th of July, 1279, for the gracious attention of Sung Chi Yi, Sung Institute of Dragon Research, 111 Imperial Avenue, Chiang An, China. Dear Father, I write to bring you news of the most recent discoveries and acquisitions I have made on behalf of the Sung Institute of Dragon Research during this expedition. How thankful I am that you should have had the astuteness to see how our family fortunes could be improved when I did, but mention it in passing, the rumors of other valuable dragons dwelling in distant parts. Okay, wait. Okay. In the past months, I have journeyed into exotic lands, and my days have been filled with excitement and adventure, but they have also been productive. Although I have yet to discover a create a creature with powers to rival those of the Japanese butterfly lizard, I have begun work on an encyclopedia of dragons which will amaze the world. The most recent addition to my encyclopedia is a striking creature with vast feathered wings of shimmering gold. I spied the beast far out to sea and, <coughs> excuse me, and pursued it all the way to its mountaintop lair on the island of Dangsha. Um, Kondoa. Kondow. Kondow. It's, it's, it, I think it's pronounced Kondow. Q-U-N-D-A-O. Kandow. It is indeed a most imposing beast, Father, and with your permission, I should like to name it Sung Chi Yi's... Oh, Sung Chen Yi's Dragon. I might mention another, but all... all but altogether less splendid addition to the list, a creature quite hideous in the aspect of it possessed a, a decidedly small intellect. The lowliest of creatures shall go by the name of Lao Zhang, Fu's worm. 
Speaking of that most disagreeable of, of men, I was delighted to learn that the emperor has seen fit to have Lao Zhang Fu's medical license suspended. But I was pleased beyond words to hear that you are now fully recovered, thanks to the wondrous healing properties of the magical lizard of Japan. In indigestion can be a terrible thing. I plan soon to strike out westward towards distant Kathmandu. I yearn still to see the fabled city. Dear father, but this time, rest assured, I have no plan to sell ill-gotten silks in the marketplace. I have heard talk of a dragon there, whose breath turns all it touches to gold. With much love, Mi Ying, your faithful and happiest of daughters. P.S. I must try to get a little music practice in sometime. Dear father, hope it doesn't disturb the local dragons. Despite um, extensive extensive searches, this tantalizing document has never been found. It is possible that it was destroyed in the Great Fire that engulfed much of Chiang An in the late 15th century. If so, its loss will be counted as one of great tragedies in modern serpentology. And that is the, the, the encyclopedia she wrote. Anyways, Plate 7, Sung Chi, no, Sung Chen Yi's Dragon. Subsequent to its discovery, Sung Chen Yi's Dragon, also known as the Great Golden Worm, became popular among the nobility of Chiang and due to its excellent aptitude for security work. Intrepid, indeed, was the 13th century burglar who entered a premise display, displaying the warning, uh, the warning sign, Beware of the Worm. That. 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 And that will do it for this episode. In the next one, we will be... We will read Chapter 3, The Discovery of Tropical Dragons. The letters of Dr. E. F. Lieberman. Tropical dragons. And I'm going to see how many there are. Just checking. One. Two. Three. I think there should probably be four, but I'm not sure. Four. Yep. There's always four, I guess. This has been The Discovery of Dragons. New Research Revealed by Graham Bass, a.k.a. Roland W. Greasebeam, B.S.C. And, um, yeah, if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. And um, with that being said, if you want to support me in any ways, all that information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.